Good morning and welcome to the AM News. My name is Enima Enimado. In our very first story, Joy News' investigation have uncovered how children are trafficked for a thousand Ghana cities to work on cocoa farms in the Western North region. One of the victims, Rashida, says her master started using her when she was 11 years old. She told investigative journalist Kwete Nate that she wishes to return to the classroom. Here are excerpts of our latest hotline documentary. Children in Cocoa Labour. By Musa, she was in class six at a basic school in Cherepone. Working long hours is not new to Rashida. She says she has served four years already under her old master. She was just 11. She is now serving for 1,000 Ghana cities, which will be paid to her parents. There is no intention of her master sending her to school. Another girl the investigative team came across is Memuna. She's serving four years for an amount of 1,200 Ghana cities. She was also brought from Trepone by the same Musa. When she isn't hawking on the streets of Eluokrum, she assists with weeding on the cocoa farms. Now, it will air on Monday, 10th January at 8.30 a.m. on the Super Morning Show and 8.30 p.m. on the Joy News Channel. Now, scores of newly admitted students at the University of Ghana are worried about their inability to secure accommodation spots. More than 15,000 students were offered admission this year into various undergraduate programs at the university with less than 3,000 available bed spaces. As the perennial struggle for accommodation sets in again, some students who have traveled long distances to the school say they may just have to quit altogether. Manuel Karanting visited the campus and in our reports. Long faces and outright despair. The most obvious expressions worn by the many frustrated students who just like their mates from the year before and the ones before that cannot find accommodation after gaining admission into the University of Ghana. I, I, I was happy like when I had the admission to, to study at this university because it was my dream university. Yeah. Everything was okay. Daniel Elijah Chung then, is a newly admitted student at the university. Unlike anything he expected in his first few days in college, what was to be his dream school is gradually becoming his nemesis. He's only one of the many freshmen who are struggling to secure a spot in the limited residential facilities on campus. The accommodation quarter was opened exactly at 9 a.m. As yesterday morning so i was online around 8 50 a.m waiting for the portal to be open so that i can be fast about getting the accommodation so by by 9 2 a.m I, I i was on a website any hall i choose there will be like there's no room for 
and there is no room available. So I was I was okay with it because I, I chose several rooms that like I chose all the halls and and then like I didn't get any room. I didn't get any room. So from that time I, I, I didn't know what to do. So I had to set off early from Winneba this this morning around six AM to get here to to fish out how things will be going concerning the accommodation. He's been roaming the entire Ligon campus for hours, dripping with sweat and the brown envelope containing his application documents literally tearing apart. He's now thinking of abandoning his course altogether. I, I, I've done whatever I could. I've been moving from, from horse to horse, floors to floors, but like no one. I've spoken a lot, so Mikra, I'm, I'm even tired. I'm even tired. I feel like I've gotten the scuba. I, I, I've not gotten it because so now I'm I'm stressed out. I, I at times like I I want to say I I want to give up. Yeah, like I want to give up. I want to stay in the house and then I come the following year rather. But Daniel is not alone. He takes me to see his other colleagues who are in much the same situation, if not worse. We were told that because of the modular system, all the people that were admitted 2020 and 2021 academic year were not permanent residents. We were just having our accommodation for just one year. So, and then this year, hopefully, they said we all should apply for the residence. So I tried to apply, but I couldn't get a room. Yeah, so I have to go back to the... I have to go back to the old old ways of going and coming, which, which is very costly. But this frustration does not only stay with students. Their parents feel the pinch just as much. Amtiama's daughter was not lucky with the online application. She is still yet to get a room, even after close to eight hours of moving from one residential hall to the other. <laughs> Things are not well. They said the portal was to be opened at 9 a.m., but we tried and couldn't get access. Now they say the rooms are all taken, and we are coming all the way from Winneba. How is my daughter supposed to come to school all the way from Winneba to Legon every day? And the story is same for thousands of other students and their parents. Indeed, most of them have had calls to explore off-campus options. Some of them are fortunate and others not so much. Outside campus, this is try our luck whether we we'll get um, a hostel. So we chanced on one kind of uncompleted building, but it has been, you know, a little touch up on it and it's quite okay. We saw some of the students there so we also tried to go there and then make inquiries. So it's, it's two in a room. And then, yeah, 2,000 what? Is it? 620 sedas. Yeah. 620 sedas. A semester. Can you imagine? 2,620 cities yeah. for one person. Yeah. Yes. Now, with each passing admission window, the accommodation crisis here at the University of Ghana only gets worse. But how many more Daniel Elijahs will be forced to abandon their entire university dreams owing to lack of space. Will this be the year that university management deals decisively with this problem? Yes, so maybe this could be our last time of reporting on this problem. For Joy News, my name is Manuel Kranting. The opposition National Democratic Congress wants governments to immediately withdraw its decision to reverse discounts on benchmark values at the ports. Speaking at a news conference, National Communication Officer of the party, Sami Jemfi, said failure to do so will exacerbate the sufferings of Ghanaians who are already distraught. Kwekwa Sante has more in the following report. The NDC says reversing the discounts on the import values will have adverse effects on Ghanaians who they say are suffering under the poor economic management of the ekufuado led government. We in the NDC hold the view that this is not a time for more taxes and draconian revenue measures such as a reversal of benchmark value discounts. We share in the view espoused by Guta and the Importers and Exporters Association of Ghana 
that the GRA withdraws the statement announcing this measure, which will only go a long way to stifle the already burdened businesses in the country. And they must withdraw this immediately. We contend, ladies and gentlemen, that this is the time for the judicious and efficient use of taxes and the meager resources of states for the benefit of the Guinean people. It is not the time for more taxes and more draconian revenue measures. Enough of the wastage and ostentation being displayed by President Ekufu and his government only to turn around and impose on the Guinean people true killer measures such as the reversal of benchmark value discounts. The party also claimed that government reversed the discount because it was cash-strapped and needed more revenue and also to balance government's book to go on a borrowing spree. We wish to make the point that this catastrophic decision has been occasioned by the self-inflicted economic malice we presently find ourselves in with our economy in tatters and government simply unable to find money to do anything. Meanwhile, a pro-new patriotic party youth group in Tamale purported to be supporters of Trade and Industry Minister Alan Tremonting are protesting what they call selective application of party rules and sanctions by leadership of the party governing the contest of elections. Leaders of the group say some high-ranking high members of the party continue to violate the laid-down guidelines with impunity without any sanctions from the leadership. Northern Regional Correspondent Martina Bugri sends this report. Addressing a press conference in Tamale, Secretary of the Youth Group, Shaibu Gafaru said some high-ranking members of the party continue to violate the laid-down regulations with impunity without any sanction from the leadership of the party. Sometime last year, the General Secretary of the party, Mr. John Buedu, announced rules and regulations to govern the conduct of will-be aspirants to various executive positions in the party. The rules and regulations were also to check the conduct of the supporters of such will be aspirants, especially those aspiring to flag bearership of the party. Among the key directives were that no party official shall declare public support for any aspirant ahead of the uh, official opinion of nominations, that no paraphernalia promoting or advertising any aspirant should be displayed publicly ahead of the opening of nominations. Since the announcement, a number of high-ranking members of the party have openly declared a support for the vice president, who, together with his supporters, have left nobody in doubt that he is interested in contesting the MPP flag bearership. Indeed, at the last National Delegates Conference of the party in Kumasi, no less a person than the vice president himself stood in flagrant breach of the aforementioned rules and regulations when he arrived at the conference grounds with supporters wearing his branded t-shirts and banners announcing his campaign for the flag bearership. Notable among these party officials are a deputy secretary of the party, Mr. Obiri Bwai, the Northern Regional Executive led by Chairman Samba, The first vice regional chairman of Ashanti, Mr. Kwabna Nsechire, the member of parliament for Karga, Honorable Amin Anta, the member of parliament for Tolong, Honorable Habib Edesu, and Honorable Farouk Mahama, MP for Yendi, and some others. These actions are clearly in violation of the party's rules, especially because of the bigotry associated with their declaration. Mr. Gafaru said, if it is okay for others to declare their support for the vice president, why are party members who support Alan Kojo Tremantin are being treated like criminals, chased by the party? The concerns we are raising today, ladies and gentlemen, are in respect of the fact that these and other regulations are not just being violated by some very high-ranking members of the party with impunity. Our major concern is that when some party members attempt to resist these violations of party rules, as happened in Savulugu during the, during the Coincidences Conference last year, the officers who try to defend the party's rules are rather victimized, ostensibly because they are known supporters of Honorable Alan Chiamantin, the Trade and Industry Minister, who is also widely known to be in contention 
for the party's 2024 flag bearer position. He added that the MPP party is a democratic party that believes and upholds alternative views, tolerance, and choice based on free will. MPP is a democratic party that believes in and upholds alternative views, tolerance, and choice based on free will. We will vehemently resist all attempts to suppress, victimize, and intimidate patrons who show support for honorable Alan Chiamantin. It is crystal, uh, crystal clear the overwhelming masses of the MPP are poised and eagerly ready to give the mandate of this party to honorable Alan Chiamantin. A philanthropic organization, 100K for Ghana, has started a project in Petoy in the Agotime Zirpe district of the Volta region aimed at economic emancipation. The group of Ghanaians living in the diaspora aim at outwitting the challenges Kente weavers face in the districts by connecting them with readily available markets. This 100K for Ghana believes would create jobs, promote growth of the local economy and enhance the livelihoods of residents. Agotime is the hub of Kente production in the Agotime district of the Volta region. Kente production, which is an age-old profession, contributes immensely to the economic growth of the traditional area. You are likely to see a structure used in producing Kente called in Ewe Asakba in almost every household. However, the weavers are faced with a series of challenges that affect their work output. It was for this reason that 100K for Ghana, a philanthropic organization financed by Ghanaians in the diaspora, is implementing a project to enhance Kente production. The organization would, among other things, provide a production hub, make available the necessary materials, and as well provide market channels. Enoch Entry is the chief executive officer of 100K for Ghana. We're building this uh, center up gradually to give back to the people of Agotime and also introduce livable wages. And as you can see, the, my team behind me, we've come all the way from the UK, some of us from Canada, uh, and some of us right here in Ghana, into the Volta region to really show the progress of our, of our hard work so far. So we continue to tell people uh, who are watching this uh, and, and, and also share this message to everyone so you can support 100K for Ghana because we are thinking about development all across Ghana, uh, particularly beginning in Volta region. Our primary objective is to help development and to help our people. And I urge and employ everyone who's Ghanaian or have an affinity to Ghana to support us in the way that we're developing Ghana. Thank you very much. The corner of the Agotime traditional area lauded the initiative. I think it's a very beautiful initiative and it is here to bring development to the people of Agotime. So I stand on behalf of the chiefs and the traditional authorities to welcome them. We're going to partner with them to bring it to fruition. We know there are a lot of bottlenecks. We're going to help them to make it a very big platform. The weavers are optimistic the intervention by 100K for Ghana would propel their Kente businesses. Oh, and yet, Georgina, I am a G. Ho, who milk pot, I Georgina, the project Yava. And I am a door, I go. I may call a man, she had a horse, a lassin, a door, I go, I lot do do to the Kumbuaga Vike, Avoa. Fred Kwame Asari, Joy News, Petwe. All right, well, that's it um, for the AM News. But, of course, the AM show continues, and we're getting into the newspapers right after this. Do stay tuned in.